Hi guys, it's Catherine. Long time no see. I have been away for a while and this video is long overdue because I missed you and we need to catch up. So today, well, I mean tonight, because it's nighttime and we're shooting indoors. Tonight I have a photo shoot and since I have to get ready and had to do my hair and makeup and throw on an outfit, I figured I may as well make a video out of it and do a little get to know me while I get ready. So you can play this while you're getting ready or I don't know, just lazing around doing whatever and we will have like our own little girls time chit chat. So I will get ready and of course anything that I put on my face as far as makeup and do with my hair and am wearing, I'll put in the description below for you. And um, I hope this helps you get to know me a little more and get us better acquainted. So with that, let's get ready for the photo shoot. All right, we're rolling, now we're ready to go. Hello, I'm back in the makeup chair, back in front of my vanity, back in my room, back to YouTube. It's been so long and I've missed it, but I finally have gotten myself together and more organized and I'm gonna try to be more consistent. I've just been, it's been crazy. So I started YouTube, I started making videos as I've always wanted to for the longest time, but I started making videos because I always wanted to. I just love YouTube. That's like my number one social media platform that I use. I've watched all the girlies do it, so I've been wanting to put my hand into it and put my spin on it. And then I got into it during lockdown because I had all the time in the world to. And then as things started opening back up, work was back up to speed, back to normal. I was pretty busy. But hey, since I'm making my reappearance. I should do a get to know me while I do my makeup and get ready for this photo shoot. So let's begin, um, of course, with foundation. My name, we'll start with my name, my full name. My name is Katherine Ann Farrell. And my first name means purity. That's fun. I think it's like old English <laughs> or whatever, whatever the etymology term is for purity. Catherine means purity. As you can tell, I'm just full to the brim of pureness. Um, and I'm doing my makeup in my camera, but I also have a mirror right here. So this is probably just better like this. And I can actually tell what I'm doing. Um, yes, Catherine Ann Farrell is my full name. I am 24 years old, born on March 10th, 1996, which makes me a Pisces, if you're in the whole Zodiac thing. And Pisces are known for being sensitive, artistic, a little bit emotional, more in tune with our emotions. I'm not, I'm not like, I don't know, I'm not some crazy chick that's like <laughs> one minute things are Gucci and then the next I'm just flying off the handle. It's not like that. I'm just more in tune with what I'm feeling, I would say. After all, Pisces in the Zodiac are the last of the signs, which means they carry traits of all the signs. So they relate to all of them and they're the most evolved. And what can I say? I'm just so freaking enlightened and as I said I'm 24 24 years young um which is funny because a lot of people think I'm younger they think I look younger um ironically because growing up well when I was a teenager in high school people always thought I was older they always thought I was in my 20s or I just carried myself I guess older um I give that up to, I'm trying to find my beauty blender. I give that up to having an older brother and um, my parents are a little bit older. I think I was a surprise baby. Um, 
like they're they're in their 60s now but I don't know I was always you know I always just thought kind of wise beyond my years and but anyway when I was a teenager people thought I was like my 20s they thought I was older I even had when I was a senior in high school I had a freshman girl come up to me thinking I was a teacher and asking for this one room <laughs> Like, well, I'm actually not a teacher, but I do know where that room is, so I can't help. <laughs> but nowadays, I don't know what, I've, I've got the Benjamin Button disease or something because everyone always thinks, that I, now people think I'm a teenager, that I'm like 17 or 18. No, I guess I should take, I don't know. I don't know if that means, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Do I seem young? No, I think I just got, even though I'm an old soul, I would say I'm also like young spirited. Like I got like a a childish wonder about me, a childish hope. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's where that comes from. Oh, uh, that was a tangent. <laughs> While you get to know me, I will probably go off on little spiels because that's kind of how my mind works, and I need to. I was born in Colorado, um, the Denver area. I'm not gonna say exactly where because this is the internet and you don't know who's watching, but <laughs> um, born in Colorado to my mom and dad, Jim and Debbie. And I have one older brother named Steven and he is 30 now. So he's six years older than me. Um, which was nice having that age gap because it was almost like having a third parent. Like there was never any like weird competition or fights between us. Like some siblings have that rivalry, but for us it was just like, eh, we're good friends. Um, And they all still live here in Colorado, as do I. So I see them quite a bit, which is nice because I love my family and I wouldn't be me without them. Like I said, I still live in Colorado with my boyfriend, Rodney. Who is my boyfriend? Who is this man? Who is this mystery man, Rodney? Well, he's not quite a mystery because he has, <laughs> he has made some appearances in some videos of mine. Um, you might be able to hear him in the background right now because <laughs> he is currently um, working from home. Well, now he's permanently working from home as most businesses have decided. So he works for Comcast on their customer care team. So he's on the phone all day. So we have to we have to be in separate rooms so he can concentrate and I can be kind of noisy. So he, does, he doesn't want that background noise. So I'm in here while he's out there. Um, but yeah, if you hear a man, a booming man voice, that is from Rodney. His name is Rodney Mutagamba, and he is from Uganda. How fun is that? I wish my name rhymed with where I'm from. So yes, that means he is African. He is, he is from the motherland, not my motherland, but he came here to the States when he was eight or nine, I believe, and was adopted. And he also has the best family. And yeah, he is, he is my everything. He is my first love. He's, he's actually my first boyfriend, um, <laughs> which is crazy. You don't, I know, 24, we met three years ago. We've been together for three years. So when we were 21, so fairly young. Um, but yes, we, Oh my gosh, I'm all over the place. What am I trying to say? He is my first boyfriend. Um, I dated before. I dated around, but never, never felt like I found the right guy that I could see myself being serious with because I'm all about serious relationships and I'm not messing around here, but I didn't want to give my heart to just anybody. But lo and behold, when I least expected it, Rodney came around and swept me off my feet. Let's see how we met was on Instagram actually of all things which 
is a lesson in itself because I used to be so, so staunch about being a traditionalist and I would never meet anyone on social media because that's not me. I like the old fashioned, get to know your way. I, we lock eyes across the room and la da 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 da. But like I said, you can't limit yourself to any possibility because it so happened when three years ago I was in college. It was a September evening. I was browsing on Instagram and um, so we have some mutual friends and I was on the Explorer page and I'm, I think it still does this algorithm wise. Your Explorer page, a lot of times it would show you what your mutual friends or like what some of your friends or followers like. It might recommend like, hey, you might like this too. So it happened to be one of Rodney. So he loves to dance. There's three things that he loves in life. He loves dancing, basketball, and tacos. So I liked the video. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't really think anything would come of it. I was just like, oh, he's, he's really cute. I like his moves. And lo and behold, five minutes later after I like it, the name Rodney Mutagama pops up liking one of my photos. I'm like, he saw me. Oh my God, I'm, I'm flattered. <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. I, it's so hard for me to talk and do makeup at the same time. I am not a good multitasker <laughs> at all. Uh, at least not when it comes to this sort of thing, but I'm trying. I'm, bear with me. Um, okay. So we did a little tag back and forth where I liked some of his photos. He liked some of mine. And finally, I was like, screw it. I'm following him. I, I had a little scheme and I was like, I know if I follow him, he's gonna message me. So <laughs> my premonition was right. My intuitive Pisces side came through for me and I followed him and then he followed me and then sent me a message. And so we started talking and we knew we were both from Denver. He lived in Denver, I lived in Denver. We were talking and then we liked the sound of each other. It was all organic. It wasn't like a Tinder where, you know, you're trying to um, hook up or whatever. It was more just, we were talking and we are like, hey, okay, well, let's, um, let's meet in person. You sound interesting. So we met for brunch on a Sunday. It was September 3rd on a Sunday. Is it September 3rd? Yeah, because I remember it was the day before Beyonce's birthday. <laughs> we met and I don't know, uh, just right away I felt like a, I don't know, just a feeling came over me that I hadn't ever experienced before with anyone else as we were walking towards each other to meet up. It was just like this serenity came over me and it felt like I knew him from before, just like I was meeting up with an old friend. I just felt this overwhelming sense of peace. And I think that's a quote from Buddha. I don't know it word for word, but I'm paraphrasing that says, you know, you found the one when, you know, it's, it's like the nerves are gone and you just feel you're at one with this person. So I knew he was special right then and there. And so we had our brunch, which I am a sucker for brunch. That was like the key to my heart. <laughs> and yeah, we, um, we talked for a while and then the rest was history. We made it happen. Now we live together. So it's pretty miraculous how <laughs> it's all come together. Like. I don't know, full disclosure, I always thought I was going to be like the independent woman who never, I don't know, that was just going to be on my own grind doing my thing, but I'm so happy that that's not how it worked out because he has made me the best version of myself possible. He's given me so much life and so much meaning and yeah, I just... I couldn't be me without him. I love him. <laughs> so what do I do for work? 
I am a model. I am with an agency here in Denver called NXT Model. And I'm also currently trying to find placement in some other states. I'm an out of town model so I can have more opportunity for more work because Denver isn't the biggest market for modeling. So you do have to typically have a good job on the side. So what I do for my bread and butter is I do promotional modeling. So I work with a marketing agency. Well, I work with a couple different marketing agencies. I'm an independent contractor where I am hired out to work all different events. Um, so we work, it's for mainly alcohol brands. We work stores and bars and go execute events and try to promote the product, inform people about it, give out samples and swag. We're just crafting positive brand impressions and you know, trying to be the life of the party. Unfortunately with COVID that did slow down a little bit, but it's starting to pick right back up into place. So I, like I said, that's been keeping me busy for the past couple months since I hadn't filmed since I think around 4th of July. But yeah, that's when things really started to go back to the way they once were, thankfully. Modeling and promotional modeling is my career path, which I love. I am very fortunate to do something that I enjoy and gets to utilize my creative side. So with modeling, I've been published in a few magazines like Luxia, um, Rocky Mountain Bride, Shuba Magazine, so a lot of small kind of indie publications, but um, it's a good start. And then I've, I've worked with some boutiques and some fashion brands, mostly based out of Colorado, like Shinesty. And I've worked with a boutique called Joy Folly. I've worked with Apricot Lane Centennial. I've worked with Swo Boutique, so you can all you can look those up. I am currently working on building up my modeling career and we are, Rodney and I are looking to move to Los Angeles or the LA area within the next year so I can get linked on with some agencies out there and hopefully work with even larger brands and he's also trying to start up his own fashion line. So LA is the place for fashion and modeling. So it's just what we have been yearning for, for a while. So yeah, I'm a little nervous, of course. I'm like, oh my gosh, is it, is it a big leap? Is it a pipe dream? But you know, you gotta believe in yourself and at least try, at least I can say that I tried. So I would love to work, I don't know, I mean, I would love to be in like Harper's Bazaar or a Vogue or Elle magazine, because I love reading them. Um, even though I'm only 5'5", five five, but you know, if there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> I love to work with brands like Revolve, I love Revolve, Misguided, Express, Ooh, um, who else? Victoria's Secret even. I mean, <laughs> I know that's that's a big, that's like, ooh, that's, I don't know. I don't know how achievable that one is, but, <laughs> and I know like they've had some controversies, but I feel like they've been improving their image and are being more accepting towards all different body types and looks so I do applaud them for that all right eyebrows but yeah my dreams career wise is is consent continuing to pursue 
modeling and making the most of it and um of course one day I'd love to be married and um children is the questionable thing <laughs> uh, I mean I do I like kids I think kids are adorable and fun I'm just I don't know I just at this point in life it's hard to picture you know maybe down the road after I've felt satisfied in my career then I'll settle down and maybe have a child or two if I were to have kids I'd, I'd want two max because I don't know I don't know how some people do it and afford anything more than that let's see my hobbies Ooh, now we're talking about hobbies okay I well clearly I love fashion and makeup that's been my like Ooh, that's been my saving grace and my form of expression for gosh so many years now since like middle school or so i wasn't wearing like a ton of makeup in middle school but just fashion and that's where my dream started of wanting to model and work in any avenue within fashion and beauty so that too is also a dream. I would love to one day have my own fashion line or cosmetic line. <laughs> I've even thought about going to school to become an esthetician because I love makeup application and skincare. That's my newest obsession. I love skincare. I love it. I love it. I don't know. I mean, I'm a dreamer. <laughs> I have so many different things that I want to do in this life. That's my personality type. As like, as far as my Myers Briggs, those um, profiles, I guess we call them. Uh, some I go back and forth. Sometimes I am an INFP, and then sometimes I'm an ISTP, which they're both pretty similar, but they're both known as being the creatives and the dreamers, adventurers. We love, we love the journey of life, being tapped into all our senses and experiences so yeah those are my hobbies fashion makeup as modeling has been a hobby that's turned into a career being in front of the camera filming youtube videos um i also love to work out i'm a big workout girl i love getting my movement in i have to work out every day or else i like go insane <laughs> it's what keeps me grounded i love to run i love yoga i love pilates um resistance training even just going on a walk with my dogs is the happy place <laughs> for me i'm like your average joe i love to read and listen to music watch movies um write i'm a writer i love to write do art, paint, draw. Oh, what else, what else, what else? What else do I enjoy? I love philosophy too, but I'm like a big philosophy buff. I'm such a multifaceted woman. <laughs> what can I say? Height, height and weight. Well, I'm not saying my weight because that is not very nice to ask a lady. What, side note, I once had a guy <laughs> on the first date, within the first 15 minutes, he tried guessing how much I weighed. So don't do that. <laughs> Word of advice. Well, that's a turn off. It wasn't Rodney. It was, it was a guy way long before that. <laughs> Thank God Rodney never did that. Or I don't think we'd be here. <laughs> um, but my height, I am 5'5", five five, so that is considered t petite. For a model, but there are certain um, niches that 5'5 five five fits into. So, of course, petite modeling, but even swimsuit or, um, you know, even car modeling, like modeling for cars. I've never done it yet. That's also something I'd love to do. But, I know, because they kind of want someone that looks balanced in front of the car, you know, 
you look too tall and you're gonna make the car look smaller. College, I did go to college. I did graduate from the University of Colorado, Denver in 2019 with a Bachelor of Arts in Communication Studies and a minor in Psychology. So you're just looking at a well-educated woman here, aren't you? No, but yeah, it was it was good. Um, college was fun. I didn't exactly go to a traditional college because it was a commuter school because I was I wasn't really focused on like the true college experience. That wasn't really my plan. I wanted to be in school but also work and focus on modeling. So I was balancing all that. It was good. It was it was just the right fit for me. So I'm grateful for that and the knowledge that I took with me. Pets. Let's talk pets. Animals, my favorite thing. Is that a hobby? Because that's like one of my favorite things on this planet is animals. I've always been obsessed with animals ever since I was a baby, really. Anyway, currently I have two dogs. Well, technically they're my boyfriends because he's had them since middle school. And then we brought them in when we moved in together, but they're basically my babies. <laughs> I've claimed them as my own. But their names are Mo and Maddie. And I'll insert a picture. But they're the sweetest little angels on this planet. Mo is a German Shepherd cattle dog mix. And Miss Maddie Patty is a Golden Retriever Shetland Sheepdog mix. And they're like brother and sister. They get along like two peas in a pod. And it's kind of funny because Maddie has is the girl and she has my hair color. And Mo is black and brown. So he has Rodney's hair color. So it's like our dogs match us. They're just, it's perfect. It's like the perfect little American dream, American family. Mo is 12 years old, I believe. And Maddie is eight. So my boyfriend adopted them when he was in middle school and high school, respectively, however that adds out to be. I think Maddie was high school and Mo was middle school. And they are just hilarious. They have great personalities. Mo is, um, it's almost like, I don't know. I feel like he's a person reincarnated because he just has like the deepest look in his eyes and it's like he knows exactly what you're thinking. And he's very smart. He knows. He can tell what you're feeling and you know if you're about to feed him or go for a walk, he gets, he goes ape. <laughs> I mean, Maddie does too. And yeah, he's just very very sensitive too. And then Maddie is, she's a pistol. <laughs> she's funny. She, she's very wild. She needs her exercise and to get her energy out. She's still a puppy at heart. And yes, I just love them. They make my life complete. They're one of the most important things to me. And Oh, should I go into <laughs> all the dogs I grew up with? I, I mean, like I said, I had a bunch of dogs growing up. I had Hudson. He was a yellow lab. He was just precious. He was like a stoner dog. All he would do is eat and sleep and cuddle. He was a blast. He was just, I'm just a gentle, loving dog and then I had Ruger which he was like 
my soulmate dog, <laughs> if that makes sense. You know, I feel like you love all your dogs, but sometimes there's like a dog that's just like extra special or just has a special place in your heart. That was Ruger for me. Ruger, the golden retriever, so you know, the best dog. <laughs> I'm not biased. And he was like my protector, my best friend. Hudson we got when I was two or three. And then Ruger, my family got when I was in kindergarten. And both of them lived till I was in high school. And then passing away was like the worst, worst day of my life. I know this is like probably <laughs> shitty to say, but I was more sad when they passed away than when my grandparents did. <laughs> no shade, it's just, you know, I spent every day with them and I didn't really know my grandparents that well because they died when I was, um, both sets died when I was fairly young. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Dogs have just been, they've just been my everything. And I also had a cat too growing up. Winston, he's the only cat I've had, but Winston we also got when I was in elementary school and then he passed away unfortunately um two years ago. So he lived to be like 12 or 13. He was an indoor-outdoor cat. And he was awesome. He was so cool. He he was I don't know what kind of cat he was. I think he was a mix, but he had blue eyes, so possibly Siamese. And he was so pretty. Um, he was a big cat too. He had to be being an indoor outdoor cat. He was almost, I think at his biggest, he was almost 20 pounds. He was honking. <laughs> He's a big honking thing. <laughs> he was also like a miniature dog because he loved hanging around the dogs and like getting up to the shenanigans that they were in. So yeah, he was, he was something else. Um, when I was in middle school, we got a dog. We adopted a dog named Eli. <laughs> Eli's also really funny. He was special. He was, he was probably the most sensitive dog that I've ever had and the smartest too. He could open doors and he knew words. He, he was, he was a character. He loved to cuddle too. He was a cuddle bunny. He also had bathroom issues. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> He had tummy troubles. He was never fully body trained. So this is funny. He was a black lab beagle mix. Don't know how that works, but it did because he was one. He basically just looked, he looked like a black lab, just kind of a little bit smaller and skinnier, but he howled. He could howl. So there was a hound dog in him. There definitely was that hound dog in him. Then later on, and I was, um, I think in eighth grade, we got a dog named Barbie. She actually, so my brother and I pet sat when I was in middle school and he was in high school slash college. We pet sat for different people in the neighborhood. I sat for these people that had this dog named Barbie. She was a Sharpay lab mix and she was so cute. And she was one of our favorites cause she was just so sweet but they were gonna move away and retire to Arizona and they weren't gonna take her with. They were just gonna give her away. They're gonna put her on Craigslist and we're like, no, you don't just throw away a dog like that just to anybody out there. So we made sure that she got a good home and the best home was with us. <laughs> so we took her in. She, we don't know how old she was. So, cause she only lived like three or four years with us before she passed away. So she was probably like eight or nine, but we like to think we gave her her best years. And so I, the, I grew up actually in the same house my whole life. We, my parents never had us move. Um, so I lived in that house until I moved into this apartment and we lived out on three acres. So we were kind of in the boondocks. We had a lot of land, we lived on a hill. I loved it, I miss it. <laughs> it was so peaceful. It was just like our own little paradise. But 
it was great for the dogs because they could roam around, chase bunnies and deer and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, so, so yeah, we got to, and now currently, as all those other dogs and the cat have passed away, but now my parents have two dogs named Chauncey and Willie. <laughs> They're flat coat retrievers. Um, which look like black old retrievers, but they're they're beautiful and they're they're hilarious. They have <laughs> they have fun personalities. Chauncey's he's a cool guy. He's he's pretty laid back, but Willie, oh my god, Willie is like a devil child. <laughs> I mean I love him. He's adorable and he's hilarious, but he's just he's odd. <laughs> I don't know what's there's something wrong with his brain. <laughs> he loves to grab wrists like not not like put his teeth into your wrist but he'll put his mouth around it gently and will try to lead you around and he just wants to take you places and <laughs> like take you on a house tour or something he just loves to grab wrists it's like his way of saying hi and he also can untie shoelaces he I don't, I don't know, just within seconds. You walk in the door and he'll just unscramble them. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> but he's a ball. And then we also, we also did, before we even had Chauncey, we got another flat coat retriever. This is sad. He, his name was Reggie, he was sweet. And um, unfortunately, he was only a couple months old and there was a day where he got out from our house and passed, we have an invisible fence to keep the dogs in, but he got past it. Um, like, where did Reggie go? And then uh, lo and behold, we look down to the street and there's just this little black bundle laying in it and someone hit him and killed him. and kept going so they were that kind of asshole but yeah so that was that was so devastating anyone who's ever experienced that I am so sorry because it is so tough to lose a puppy especially so violently like that but luckily the people that we got Reggie from were kind and understanding enough to give us another shot and let us have Chauncey and then eventually Willie, so. <laughs> At least that was kind of a redemption factor. But Reggie lives forever in our hearts. All right, what's the next question? Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, my computer's off to the side here. So that's what I'm looking at. It has my list of questions. My favorite color, wow. <laughs> We're just getting down to basics. That's the loaded question because I love color. <laughs> um, I have so many colors that I just adore and appreciate. I know that should just be an easy, like one word answer, but it's not for me. I'd say overall, probably purple. <laughs> I just love purple. I also love red. Red's always been one of my favorite colors. I love blue. Um, I love pink. And I don't know, it, it depends like <laughs> the situation, the colors and like, as far as like makeup and stuff, like I don't really wear color colors. I, like, I don't really do purple or pink or anything like that. I mean, here and there, but not generally speaking I go for a more natural earth tone look so that's where like I really appreciate browns and golds and tans neutrals like that I mean on my eyes I should say I pretty much love all colors each has a certain meaning to me um okay Favorite color, music, favorite music. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm pretty open-minded to music. I love 
all types, but rap and hip hop is like my number one fave. And um, I mean, I love pop too, R and B. I'll, I'll listen to anything. I mean, I'm not a huge country fan, I will say that. As far as artists, music artists, I mean, Beyonce, that's, I probably mentioned it in like every video. I love Beyonce. Love her, love her to death. She just is my muse. Um, um, our rap artists, I, so I love Kid Cudi. I have like, <laughs> a thing for him which is funny because my boyfriend does not like him very much I and mean, he likes the old Kid Cudi but I think he's also partially jealous how much I really like Kid Cudi and I'll admit I don't I vibe more with the old Kid Cudi than some of his new stuff but I still I still I still rock with him so of course Tupac and Biggie you can't deny the classics Nas, uh, I like Mob Deep. I'm going old school right now. Today's music, I do like Travis Scott, Kendrick Lamar, of course, one of my favorites. Um, ASAP Rocky. Well, I feel like I need the list in front of me. Earth Gang, I like. Flatbush Zombies, Joey Badass, the mm, baby. <laughs> I love me some the baby. Um, who else? Who else? I'm gonna just pull up my music library right now. Screw it. SZA. Oh my God, I love SZA. Um, I really like Amy Winehouse. Um, rest in peace. And Nirvana, Ariana Grande, that's, she's my guilty pleasure because her as a person kind of annoys me. I feel like she's a diva, but I can't deny it. I love her freaking music. She just, she's got the bops, man. Um, Blink-182 is always classic. A Boogie with a Hoodie. Um, Brent Fayez. Childish Gambino, Chris Brown. Sorry, I know that's that's a that's a controversial one. <laughs> um, Corday. I'm just picking out J, J. Cole, Eminem. More so older Eminem, but some of the, there's some new songs he still puts out that are decent. Um. I didn't finish mascara on this side. Fleetwood Mac, hell yeah. Now they're making a huge comeback with the um, the meme. And Frank Ocean, duh. Jay-Z, I do like Kanye. Sorry if that ruffles your feathers. Black, Six Lack, he's amazing. I like Justin Timberlake. Um, <laughs> who else? Who else? Who else? Some of these are like, yeah, like one or two of their songs. Miguel, I do like. Lana Del Rey, hell yes. How could I forget? She is my queen. Um, Little Wayne, I do like. I do like. I do like. Oh, Miley Cyrus is another guilty pleasure. <laughs> I just, I love her voice. I think she's terrific. I think she's also a cool chick. I, I feel like she could be just like a cool friend. Like just someone who's just down. Outcast, yeah, I'm a big Outcast fan. Pussycat Dolls, <laughs> I want a reunion tour. Um, actually, I think, aren't they doing one? I feel like I saw that somewhere. Well, probably not anymore right now, but maybe eventually. I would totally go. Um, Panic at the Disco <laughs> brings out my emo side. I gotta, I gotta show out for it. 
Uh, did I say Rihanna? I think I did. His favorite movies and TV shows. Um, gosh, man, that's hard. Um, as far as TV shows, I don't know. I have to admit, I'm not like a huge TV watcher anymore, like I used to be. I just I find it so hard to like take the time to sit down and just get immersed in a show but because I, I do watch YouTube more than I do Netflix or anything like that but of course uh, I mean I love comedy TV shows I love The Office, Parks and Rec, I love Community I, I, Community might be my top favorite I have to say I'm, I've been watching Schitt's Creek that's hilarious too um I don't know. I don't know if it's still on anymore, but I used to love watching Project Runway. That was like my favorite show for so long. And I don't know what happened, but I just kind of like, um, I got swept away from it. I need to see if it's still on. I actually met Tim Gunn once. Um, that's a fun fact. I met Tim Gunn in New York. That's a fun. He was a sweetheart. I mean, I only met him for like, 20 seconds but he, he was great it was actually I just it's such a weird story we happen to be going into a Walgreens because I needed band-aids for my feet because I was wearing shoes that were not New York walking appropriate and I needed some band-aids for my heels and they're doing a um a meet and greet there it was the one there's the Walgreens the Times Square um and Tim Gunn was there doing a meet and greet and you could go wait in line and take photos with him. I was like, oh my God. And the line wasn't even that long because it was kind of, I don't know if they didn't advertise it or what, but I don't know. And I was like, oh my God, I have to meet him. He's my idol. He's, he's everything to me. So he was great. I met Tim Gunn. I need to find my picture with him. I have it in a frame because that was years ago. That's Tim Gunn. He is a class act. Um, yeah. Favorite movies? There's so many, guys. I don't know. I love Shawshank Redemption. I love... Pulp Fiction. Black Panther. I love... La La Land. Oh, God. What else? I don't know. Like, my all time favorite movie. I really liked Life of Pi. That was amazing, too. Spectacular. Oh, my gosh. It's so hard off the top of my head to think. I also love Lion King, the cartoon version. And. Uh, I don't know, guys. So many. I'll watch any, any and every movie. Um. I'm not a big horror movie person though. I, I, I sometimes, but I get the moods right. But a lot of times I just find them more like stupid than anything. <laughs> and of course I love comedy movies too, like Dumb and Dumber and The Hangover. And Okay, my makeup is done, but I still have a few more questions that I want to answer, so we're just gonna blaze through it. My spirit animal, I would say, I mean, I've taken a quiz. <laughs> I've taken many quizzes <laughs> to find it out. And a lot of times I get wolf, so I'll say wolf and, uh, well, wolf or a leopard, because I love to wear a leopard print. And I say I'm a cute cat. Apparently, my last name, Farrell, it's, I had a college professor tell me this. It was for a religious studies class, but she was also like a specialist in etymology or something like that. But she told me that my last name, the way it's broken down, it essentially means the goddess of wildcats or something like that. Because F-E, F-E in it, is an association to feline. And then the last two letters, E-L, that is, I can't remember if it's like Hebrew or 
what EL was, what language it was, but EL refers to God or goddess. So the goddess of cats, of cats. And my computer's dead. That's good. We'll just do a few more off the top of my head. Um, right-handed or left-handed, I am a right, right-hander. I don't freeze, but yeah, I'm right-handed. Introvert or extrovert? I am kind of a mix of both, but I would say I tend to lean more towards the introvert side. Um, just because growing up, I was always more like a quiet, introspective kid. And I still have that side to me, but I've learned to come out of my shell more. And you know, I do need human interaction. And I, if I don't have it, then I feel like I'm going stir crazy. But then again, if I have too much, then I need to <laughs> go home and be a hermit and recharge. So yeah, I'm a little bit of both. I'm an ambivert. Ambivert mixed with introvert. Three characteristics to describe myself. I would say that I am kind. I am stylish. <laughs> and I am spiritual. I'm gonna take this headband out because my head is starting to hurt. Like I said, it's doing it. Do I have like headband hair now? Does anyone else get headband hair? Is that just me? Is my hair natural? Yes, it is. I have never dyed it or colored it, anything like that. And they're not extensions, it's all the real deal here. Not that there's anything wrong with either of those things, but I don't know. When it comes to my hair, I, I like to just embrace what I have. I'm very happy with my hair. I do love my hair. That's, that's actually a segue into the next question, which is what are some things you love about yourself and something that you wish you could change? Which, um, as far as physical traits, I love my hair. I love my eyes. I <laughs> I love my body, um, which is something that I've had the hardest time saying for a majority of my life, which uh, has it's been a struggle, but I've learned to appreciate my body more and not see it as an ornament, but as a vessel that carries my soul and my character. What I also love about myself is I love my determinism. I am a very motivated person who makes my dreams into reality or does my very best to. I believe I have a big heart. I don't know how to totally describe this next thing, but I'd say I'm very, um, what I also love about myself is I'm also I don't know if sensual is the word because that kind of comes off as like just being sexual <laughs> and it, I mean more sensual as in like I am very deeply aware of my senses like I can I don't know like I see things very vividly I feel things strongly I I don't know I'm, I guess I'm just maybe an observant person is what it boils down to. Um, I guess something I'm working on is, um, it's like, I don't know, I, sometimes I'm told I'm a mysterious person. Um, I don't know, because I, I am more private. It is hard for me to talk about myself, which is ironic because I'm doing this, but <laughs> um, I'm doing this about me video, but like in real life, I'm someone who doesn't totally share a lot about myself. Like I don't share, you know, like basic information, but sometimes it's harder for me to be like vulnerable. I guess I'm trying to open up more. And like, I mean, like, privacy is a good thing and having a little mystery, but I think too much can come across as guarded. And last but not least, my message to the world, which is this, is to love yourself, be yourself, feel every part of yourself, the good and bad, and live this life to the fullest of your capabilities. Okay, and that concludes the questions. Let me 
just fix up my hair a little bit and I'll show you the outfit I'm wearing and then I'll be on my way to the photo shoot. So for my hair, I did my signature heatless waves, which I have a video on and I will link to. I did cheat a little bit and use a curling iron for some of the pieces. So I know, but that's okay. It still turned out pretty nicely, I would say. And I will show you my outfit. Then we have my outfit of the day or night, I should say. Uh, I should probably flip it this way. I wish this mirror was taller, but it's okay. It's just a little difficult when you're in heels. But we have this little outfit. It's kind of, kind of reminds me of like Italian villa, Dolce and Gabbana inspired. We have this off the shoulder black bodysuit with the lace pattern and cute little cutout at the neckline. I have this black tulip hemline from express it's a, a skirt of course and then a black belt from misguided that i threw on and then my favorite boots of the season they are black stiletto heel over the knee boots i got them at nordstrom and i don't know if the no <laughs> the brand name isn't on it um uh, it's, it's fine. It's, it's, it's something you can find just about anywhere. Then I have just simple silver jewelry, some dangly earrings, and um, a pendant necklace. And I'm gonna throw on a either a black leather or a red leather jacket. And that'll tie it all together and make it a gorgeous little fall outfit. It's chic, it's glam, it's sexy, it's everything that I love to wear. Okay guys, I seriously need to end this video because I am running late. But I thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you felt like you got to know me a little bit better outside of the YouTube sphere and got a glimpse of what I might be like in real life. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys. I love you.